everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another Royal News video. So if you are new here and you decide that you like the content, please remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and hit that notification bell, which will occasionally tell you when I have posted a new video. So today's video, we're going to start off with a member of the royal family that many people do love, and that is Sophie the Duchess of Edinburgh. Yesterday, she paid a visit to the glorious and stunning county of Somerset, where she attended an educational event called Field to Food. It is obviously teaching children and adults the like the importance of how and where our food does in fact come from. Sophie, despite the fact that she was dressed up looking absolutely impeccable, had no problem getting down into the straw with the help of a lovely young lady who seemed quite taken with her to meet some of the newest additions to the local farming community. After sampling lots of various foods and making new friends, Sophie then visited Yeo Valley Organic Garden at Holt Farm in Blagden. Tim Brooke and Chris Jackson were there taking photographs of Sophie and there were some really beautiful shots. But then Sophie is such a lovely person. She gets along really well with everyone that meets her and she's incredibly beautiful. I think people would be really hard pressed to actually get a bad shot of her. Prince Philip would be incredibly proud of his favourite daughter-in-law who has taken on his love of agricultural and farming communities. These are communities that are often the hardest hit every single year and it's so important to educate children and adults the importance of where our food comes from, what we should be consuming, where we buy it from, how it makes its way to the table. It helps us all make informed choices for the future. We've grown up now with so much manufactured stuff being pumped our way. It was only recently where I learned about nutrition on my weight loss journey, as we call it. And it is down to checking the labeling. If you can't understand what's on the back of the label, then chances are it's probably not that good for you long term. Now, speaking of labeling and speaking of food and how it's processed and how it actually makes its way to our breakfast table, let's talk about one particular condiment which is very popular called jam or in America I believe it's actually called jelly. But we are talking about an American woman that has just pushed her new venture out into the world via Instagram and she has released or unleashed her strawberry jam. And you know what? the strawberry jam has completely sold out. The problem is for Megan, it's not actually her strawberry jam that sold out. It is in fact the King's and the Highgrove Estates jam. Because of Meghan's publicity surrounding the fact that she is a duchess, she can use her titles because the King does, because other members of the royal family do it and they have also sold jam. It's brought worldwide attention to the fact that you have got the Highgrove Estates, which is the king's private estate where everything is organic, everything that is produced there is made into lots of jams, lots of chutneys, lots of honey, and you can buy it and it ships worldwide. And guess what? At $6.95 a jar, it's actually affordable. So of course, it's completely sold out. I bet there's some plates smashing over in Montecito. She's really done another own goal there. So busy to prove to the world going, well, if the king can do it, why can't I? Well, the king has been doing it for a number of years. Highgrove has been selling a high quality produce for a number of years. And the fact that all of the proceeds from the sales of the jams and the chutneys and the honeys and whatever else they sell goes to charity. I think we're all 99% certain that Meghan's jams, when she eventually puts it into mass production, will not be going to charity. Now, my first thoughts when I read about this strawberry jam selling out, I thought to myself, I wonder, has Meghan bought all of the King's strawberry jam? Because we know that she's into plagiarism. She's got no original ideas herself. There's now a big shipment of this jam on its way to Montessori where Megan is going to decant it into her own jars, stick on one of her American Riviera orchard labels and stick what looks like medical packing gauze onto the top of it so she can pass it off as her own. It wouldn't surprise me. But Peter Ford, who is an Australian news commentator, he said on Good Morning Australia that the thing is, because she is marketing it as American Riviera Orchard, you'd expect the fruit to be regional. Like with Highgrove, all of the fruit and the vegetables that are used are actually grown on the estate. Is what Megan is putting into those jars from her estate or from the nearby regional area? Because the chances are, 
Megan is going to be mass producing this somewhere. And I don't think Megan's setting up a factory, if you know what I mean. So I, I, my gut feeling is telling me when this goes for sale, she's going to have an official factory or kitchen that probably already mass produces jam. It's already approved. It follows all health guidelines, food standard agencies, free of contagions, unlike Megan's clever blends coffee that she started promoting. Yeah, that had lead chases in it in the beginning. They've luckily now fixed that problem. But Megan is going to want to outsource it to professionals that have been completely cleared, as I said, by the Food Standards Agency or whatever the American equivalent is. So she doesn't get sued if someone has an allergic reaction to something that's in there and she hasn't put it on her label. But the thing is, Megan hasn't put anything on these labels. It's quite pretentious. She's labeled them one to 50, which is quite funny when you think about it, because if you are one of those people in the first 10, you're like, hey, yeah, I'm the most popular. If you are in the next 10, maybe, okay, up to 20. But if you're jar 47, 48, 49, 50, you think to yourself, well, if that's where I am on her priority list, then I'm not gonna promote the products. And funnily enough, that theory has come true because out of the 50 jam jars, she's shipped out in these different makeshift lemon baskets with looks like shredded hamster bedding paper in it. She's only had four celebrities or influencers post about it, four out of 50. And you know what? They are all below the number 20. So I think there's some truth to my theory there. Anyone else is like, well, if I wasn't important enough to be in the top 20, then I'm not promoting anything for you. Now the Royal Road pointed out the reason why Megan's made it look so exclusive one to 50 is more to do with the fact she can keep track of where the jam jars are going. She can see if anyone has sold maybe one of her jam jars or perhaps someone's stolen her secret recipe highly unlikely but i also think megan has tracked them one to 50 she's got a catalog of who exactly she sent them to to see how well they promote her product who is it out of her friends that's actually going to be useful? Who got the most views? Who posted it and promoted it the way that she asked them to? You can imagine Megan sitting there with a red marker pen and a, a catalogue of who she sent these jars to, right? She'd be asking members of staff. What about number 27? Oh, I'm sorry, Megan, they just don't have enough followers. There was hardly any engagement in it whatsoever. <laughs> Right, they're gone. Okay, we're not sending her any more freebies. Okay, what about number six? Uh, number six didn't promote it for a week and she took the jar out of your lemon handcrafted basket and put her own background behind it. Right, she's done. Okay, what about number 50? I had high hopes for number 50. Oh, Megan, you're not gonna like this. Um, I think it's because they were number 50 that they have actually returned the basket to you, but they did include an extra special drawing in the basket. <laughs> Honestly, you can see it though, can't you? Megan is that cutthroat. Of course she's that cutthroat. That person's of no longer use to me. That person promoted my product well. That person, they're off the Christmas card list. Why, why, what did they do? They didn't use the color swatch that I sent them. I'm not happy with that because I'm a control freak. Now, because people on Twitter are keeping track of the few people that have come forward, as I said, four out of 50 so far, we have noticed that Oprah is not one of them. We've not got Gail King. We've not got Gloria Steinem. We We've not got Ted Sarandos. <laughs> We've not got even Serena Williams. She's busy from what I saw this morning promoting Epsom bath salts, I think it was. But yeah, quite a lot of people that you think would be ready and waiting in the wings to launch Megan's product have decided to distance themselves from it. But time will tell as of when or how long it takes for them to come forward. Perhaps Oprah has decided after traces of lead were found in the Clever Blends coffee, she's thinking, do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll wait till it's uh, professionally produced and packaged before I decide whether I'm gonna promote this. But what is also funny is Rest in Dollface, a Twitter account or X account, whatever you wish to call it, they have managed to find a clip from another adult TV cartoon that got cancelled by Gary Janetti. It was called The Prince. And Gary Janetti was really funny on Instagram, but when he actually pulled together this cartoon, it was just offensive to everybody apart from Harry and Meghan. He took it easy on them but it was really horrible about the Queen and Prince Philip and of course Prince George, who was at the time an eight, nine year old defenseless child. So the show got canceled and it just wasn't funny. But what is funny is this clip, listen. So all you'd have to do is Instagram yourselves using my ketchup. It'd be a huge help. I see. Well, that's something we'll definitely think about. 
Yes, it would seem that even the adult cartoons have in fact got Meghan Markle's number because Meghan is, if anything, predictable. Now, to finish up with my final story, I've got some bad news for my fellow friends in the USA. He's yours now. Sorry, not sorry. No returns on faulty goods. Harry has officially stated his residency is no longer the UK. Finally, long overdue. And he is now officially a resident of the United States of America. Now the newspapers are naturally making it sound a lot more dramatic than what it is because Harry has not decided yet that he is going to become a US citizen. To do so, it would mean that Harry wouldn't just give up the dukedom, he would have to give up his title of prince. He would become just Henry David Mountbatten Windsor. And as we know, there is no way that Meghan is going to allow that to happen because if his title goes of Prince and Duke, she will just be plain old Meghan Markle. But then also their future business ventures, sorry, children, will also lose their titles as well. So Harry, there's no way that I think that he's going to take the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, the reason why this has made it into the news is because of Travelist. I'm not going to bore you with that because no one has really any idea what Travelist does. Harry looked bored to be there himself, changed his outfit, it looks like, as well. And he looked like he was bored to tears. But it's to do with the update of information on Company's house. Now, the papers, I'm sure this has been pushed, the narrative has been pushed by Harry and Meghan's PR team, have said that Harry changed the date of his residency from the day that he and Meghan were evicted from Frogmore. Well, that's definitely putting a dramatic spin on it, isn't it? Poor Harry and Meghan were cruelly evicted by the cold, evil, nasty royal family. Harry and Meghan and children were left practically homeless, even though they were already living in America. Now, at the end of the day, Frogmore Cottage was a grace and favour home gifted to them by the Queen for a wedding gift because they were meant to be working royals. The only real work that Harry and Meghan did from their wedding was plotting their cash and carry hit job behind the scenes, lining up deals, lining up companies, lining up cash before they decided to launch Megxit. Frogmore Cottage was on a lease. They did not own it. And what happens with lease properties is the lease can be up for renewal and you can renew it or you can choose not to. In this case, I believe that King Charles decided that his son was not going to be allowed to renew it. This came after Spare, the extra attacks on Charles, on Prince William, on Catherine, on everyone, revealing private information to do with residences, which is a bit of a security breach for his family. But more importantly, why well, I say more importantly, but from Charles's perspective, he said, do not cross the line and attack my wife again. So Harry did. He attacked Camilla, as we know, in an awful way, calling her like this evil villain who sacrificed him. It was all very, as I said, dramatic. The real drama llama stuff. She was this evil, wicked, queen of a stepmother that conned her way to the crown. <laughs> Harry needs to look closer to home the person that conned her way into a tiara rather than looking at his dutiful stepmother who at one point Harry did tell the world who he loved very much. The thing is with Harry, like with many things we've seen, he has never had boundaries set for him. So Charles did finally set him a boundary and Harry went, do you know what, like a petulant kid, you won't do anything. Well, do you know what, he did, didn't he? But this is the really funny thing that I find about Harry and Meghan. It's like a, a bit of karma, an own goal. The more that Harry and Meghan have tried to destroy the monarchy, the more it has backfired on them. The world has seen Harry and Meghan blame everybody apart from themselves. They've never taken any accountability from anything. Their run of bad luck was apparently because the Queen selfishly died, Prince Philip selfishly died. That's the reason why the Oprah backlash happened. Not because they lied to the world. No, no, no. It was because Prince Philip had died, so that made people automatically and unfairly hate them. Harry and Meghan have blamed staff, despite the fact that Harry even admitted that he and Meghan were so cruel to them that they were left slumped and crying over their desk. They couldn't take criticism. Well, Harry, you should look closer in that mirror. 
Every failure that these two have had, every bit of backlash that they have had, it's the media's fault, it was the pandemic's fault. Even Spotify got it as well. Meghan and Harry blame Spotify for the reason why the contract was cancelled and they produced absolute zip. They said it was because they didn't give them enough help. There was, there was too much red tape. They literally built them a recording studio in their home. They used members of their own staff to record interviews which they then edited Meghan's voiceover in a couple of instances. They did absolutely everything and that was all Meghan and Harry could produce for them. But of course it's never ever Meghan and Harry's fault. It's the same rinse and repeat. Harry and Meghan are perpetual victims. They are always blaming someone or something for their own misgivings. Like teenagers stomping their feet saying it's not fair, it's not our fault. The more that these two express themselves to the world, the more footage that we see of them interacting, the more interviews that they give, the more people realise that Meghan didn't so much as save Harry, she saved the royal family because she, in effect, took out the weakest link. Ever since Meghan has come on the scene, obviously I have been a royal watcher for a number of years, but I have really changed my opinion on these two. I actually now think that they are incredibly well suited. They are Mr and Mrs Veruca Salt. They are both bad eggs. And what do we say about bad eggs? Good riddance. So guys, that's it for me on this video. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about the fact we've only had, at the time I was filming this, four people out of 50 come forward? Do you think that people are avoiding being publicly associated with Meghan's RO brand, or in fact, Meghan herself? Or do you think there just might be a postal problem around the Montecito area, and there's currently lots of lemon baskets that are piling up in a depot somewhere? Please let me know what you think, and I will be back with you very soon. Take care for now. Bye.